down and long. This is where Anthony Smith comes in for the Raiders with his 11 sacks. That's him chasing Harbaugh. Incomplete. Curtis Conway was the intended target. They'll have to punt. We go to New York. And, Dick, we go back to Foxborough. Six minutes left in overtime after a 46-yard Kelly to Reed pass. Christie nails the 32-yard field goal. Buffalo completes the comeback from down 10 0 to New England in the fourth. The Bills win it 13 10 to get to 7 and 1. Back to Dick and Bob. All right, Jim. So, Buffalo, Miami now playing at New York against the Jets, the other team in the NFL with only one loss starting this weekend. Chris Gardaki's left footed spiral sends Tim Brown back to the eight yard line. And he's covered at the 11. The Bears are the best in the league in kick coverage, punts and kickoffs. Number 54, Ron Cox, the backup linebacker with a stop. The Raiders take the field, their first possession, and Jeff Hostetler at quarterback will have Perry Wisniewski, Wisniewski and most bar pro bowlers, Montoya, playing his 202nd game in Wilkerson on the line. Greg Robinson, the rookie from Northeast Louisiana, Smith the blocker, Brown and right outside, and Ethan Horton the tight end. It's Steve Smith, the rare carry for him, and the big guy from Penn State rumbles for a first down to the 23. He's gained only 46 yards rushing all year. Excellent job up front, but they went to the soft spot of the defense. Inside Dent, outside Zorich. Excellent lead block by Greg Robinson, who is normally the running back. And that's a nice quick and op quick opener for more than 10 yards. 12 for Steve Smith, who you said a rare carry. I mean, he's one of the premier blocking backs there is in the league. That's his longest rush of the year. In fact, the longest by any Raiders, 17. This is Robinson getting outside. Breaks away from Wolford and picks up another three. It'll be second and two. The Bears defense has improved week by week and now ranks sixth in the NFL. Armstrong, the veteran McMichael, Zorich, Richard Dent, the pass rusher, Smith, the ex-cowboy, Dante Jones, and Joe Keane, the linebackers. Danell Wolford, uh, they say here in Chicago, as good as any corner in the league. Lincoln may be picked on. He starts his second game. Gale and Carrier, two tough-hitting safeties. Mangum and Douglas come in. Nadine Smith to the 33. It'll be close to a first down. Dante Jones and others on the stop. Now, Dick, this Los Angeles Raider offense has always been a threat to run the football throughout this season. They've had great difficulty. Art Shell last night told us that along with finishing their blocks, they're going to try to widen their splits a little bit to spread out the defense, give their running backs just a little more room. This opening drive, they're running the ball very well. That's another first down. The Raiders are averaging only three yards per rush this year. And look at the size of the splits here between the guards, the tackle. That's a major change in the way the Raiders normally set up. To this point, it's a very positive sign for the Raiders running game. All right, the defensive coordinator for the Bears sees that. What does he do to counter? He slants more. You give a predetermined move to your front four. On first down, Settler, big hole for Robinson, skips outside. To the 46 yard line, another Raider first down. All on the ground, three consecutive first downs on their opening possession. 13 on that play. And we welcome those of you who have seen the dramatic comeback by the Buffalo Bills to go 7 and 1. Bill Parcells, Patriots gave them all they could handle but in overtime 13 10 at Christie field goal for Buffalo and boy have they had a record first half of the season Buffalo the last six seven years seven and one six and two is a bad start for them they're cooking again first possession for the Raiders and the first half play to Smith and for the first time on this drive by the Raiders the Bears able to stuff them on a run Staying strictly on the ground, Hostetler handing off to Smith and Robinson has picked up three first downs. Bears got the kickoff. They took it out to midfield and had to punt, and this is the Raiders' first chance. And if uh, you've not seen the Chicago Bears this year, this defense is going to look an awful lot like the Dallas Cowboys. It is the exact same defense, same philosophy, same formation, everything. Napoleon McCallum comes into the backfield for the Raiders. He has not carried the ball in two years. Not this year, nor last. Hostetler's first pass wide open. 
the tight end Ethan Horton and a first down at the 40. Jeremy Lincoln made the stop, a 12-yard gain. Horton, another one of those uh, converted running backs. Look, a free release off the line of scrimmage. I, I don't know when they started doing this in the NFL, but it certainly made a lot of these tight ends a lot bigger factor in the passing game. Now, granted that you want to get to the quarterback, but Jim Dent went right by Ethan Horton. Free release, easy completion for a first down. It's the Todd Christensen rule. Todd, <laughs> Todd was the one who put that in. Says you can't hit stuff me at the line of scrimmage. <laughs> Napoleon McCallum, that had to seem strange to the great player at the Naval Academy. McCallum, who has been reduced to a special teamer with the Raiders, his first rush in a couple of years. He, in 1985, set an NCAA record all-purpose yards, over 7,100 yards in a season for the Middies. And then he left and was assigned to a... A, a helicopter carrier, the USS Peleliu, and used to come back and forth and play a little bit for the Raiders and then go back in the Navy. Stedler has thrown once, and he hits again. Horton, the tight end, close to a first down. And we welcome those of you who have seen the Seahawks and uh, Houston. And uh, a big win for the Oilers, 24-14. This is to Kenberg with Bob Trumpy, Soldier Field, Chicago. Each team with a possession. The Bears took the opening kickoff. Was stopped at the 49, had to punt. The Raiders on the touchback. Well, actually, they took the ball out to the 11 on a Tim Brown punt return to their own 11, and it marched primarily on the ground to the Bears. 31-yard line. This is a critical third and one. The first lieutenant has a first down on a rare, rare opportunity. He picks up 10 yards. Well done. They had the uh, tilt offense in there. 64, Todd Pete playing a tight end. Good block on Trace Armstrong, 93. 35, Smith, good lead block. And McCallum, as you said, very few carries over the last two years. Fresh and very happy to get a few carries here in the first drive. Well, on a team that's averaging three yards a carry this season, second worst in the league. McCallum now sporting a 10-yard average. And here comes the rookie Greg Robinson and another healthy chunk of yardage. And uh, for a team that's been maligned in regard to their ability to move on the ground, the Raiders very impressed on this opening opportunity. It, Dick, in part, it's got to be those line splits. Another good lead block by 35 Smith on 59 Kane. Big hit by Mark Carrier. Young man out of USC, people out in the Southern California area. Remember him playing for the Trojans. So, Jeff Hotstepler sets his line. Another second and short. And Smith gets only a yard. Steve Smith. And it'll be third and two. Joe Kane played his ball at Oregon Tech, made the stop. Uh, this is interesting. Last week, we know that, we, we know that, let's see what we got here. Uh, Richard Dent in this last play. That's Gerald Perry. He's facing Perry. One of the best kept secrets, I think. Whoop, Richard Dent appended a little bit. Gerald Perry, don't do that. that that's it. No, no, don't get in there, Mr. Official. Stay out of the way of those two guys. <laughs> Third and a long yard and a half. And Smith stops. So they go to the fullback, and Steve Smith, who doesn't get many opportunities to run the ball, has been used often on this drive, but doesn't make it this time. And on comes the field goal unit for Art Shell's Raiders. Even though they, the drive has stopped, that's got to be very encouraging for Art Shell. They ran the ball beautifully in that drive, Dick. Jeff Jager having another solid season, 13 out of 15, his longest 53 yards. And this will be just inside uh, 32 yards, officially 31. Gossett moves, and Jager, wind and all, nails it down the middle. The Raiders take the early lead, 3.02 remaining opening quarter. 
76-yard drive, 13 plays for the Raiders. They settled for the field goal, and what has to be important for Los Angeles, 10 rushes, 57 yards, so they average 5-7 per carry. Uh, that's a great start for any football team. Jeff Jagger to kick it off. Curtis Conway, a terrific collegiate returner. He's been banged up a bit, bad shoulder, and he won't get a chance here. Kicking with the wind, the Bears get the touchback at the 20, and a timeout with 2.57 left in the opening period. Looks back from Soldier Field to the city with broad shoulders. Mike Ditka's hometown. I wonder if he's going through a quiver, too, as he watches uh, his former players here today. Now, here in Chicago, they don't call him Ditka. He's Dicka. <laughs> Mike Dicka. Iron Mike, and they got Iron Head in the backfield. And that was the switch they made. Anderson smothered at the 20. Anderson carried five times in the first series for Chicago, gained only 12 yards. And uh, this was the scene on the sideline during that last break we had there. This is Clarence Brooks, the defensive line coach. Wanstead, the head coach, being very demonstrative. The entire defense there and those line splits causing problems for the Bears defense. He's going to fix it now, he says. Meanwhile, no gain on first down for the Bears and Harbaugh, who's through two passes in the first possession. Both rollouts to try to get away from that Raider pass rush pressure. Raiders are second in the league with 27 sacks. The Saints 29. Underneath Anderson and Winston Moss just had a free lick on him. Boy, there is nothing there. I mean, you can see the pressure coming on Harbaugh. How are long inside? Anderson, I got a feeling that there was supposed to be a screen man out there in front of him, an offensive lineman. The lineman didn't make it. And Moss with a two-yard deficit on the pass completion. From Tampa Bay for a couple of draft picks two years ago. Third and 12. Fred Franks, the former Miami Dolphin in the game. Harbaugh. 15 and it was Greg Townsend who was there first Anthony Smith to clean up Townsend with his fifth sack of the year now you can't blame that on the quarterback or the receiver here's Townsend you watch when Harbaugh drops one two three four five sets and Townsend is there and we talked about Lewenberg 58 J Lewenberg Townsend a great outside pass rusher just beat Lewenberg around the corner and Gardaki now, the left-footed kicker to Tim Brown, one of the better return men. Fair catch ball by Brown at the Bear, 47-yard line. Just over a minute left in the first period. The Raiders with the ball and the lead. Bears and the Raiders. Boy, Bob, I can think back nine years ago, almost to the date. The fiercest game that I think I've ever seen. The, these two teams, they were knocking people out there, carrying them out of here. The quarterbacks, that was when Jim McMahon was injured, lost for the year. And uh, Mark Wilson and David Hum, his replacement, knocked out. Great guy was almost the quarterback for the Raiders. Hostetler down the middle. Incomplete at the 30-yard line intended for Horton, who has the two catches for the Raiders thus far, and Hostetler under pressure. Uh, through the grapevine, heard this week that Jeff Hostetler established a new, uh, Chris Zorich right in the chest, but uh, Jeff Hostetler established a new NFL record uh, last Wednesday in Los Angeles. He was in a training room with seven ice bags. <laughs> that is seven ice bags. Running into a bumblebee nest. <laughs> Everything hurts. Robinson on a quick toss. And he stopped right at the sticks by Vincent Smith. Robinson, the leading Raider rusher, 264 yards coming in. Dick, they're not doing anything fancy here. You see Kane, 59, commit to the outside. Robinson cuts it inside. Vincent Smith, 55, has to come from all the way across the field to make the tackle. Uh, whatever Wanstatt and the defensive line coach told him to do in the last time they were sitting on the bench, it hasn't worked. Nine-yard average for Robinson, who now is at an even 300 for the year. Hostetler underneath, incomplete. Whoa. And that ball flying around uh, where it could have been picked off by a number of players. Donnell Wolford on the coverage. Looked like it was rocket. 
uh, Ismail it was intended for. Uh, watch Hostetler. He pumps this thing about four or five times. I think he's waiting for the tight end 88, Ethan Horton. And then, oh, that comes right up the shoulder pads and is fair game for everyone. Zorich almost had a shot at an interception. So Jeff Gossett in the punt. Terry Obi stands at the 10-yard line. Gossett winds it over Obi's head and then into the end zone. So to the 20-yard line on the touchback, the Bears will have it. When we return, 19 seconds left in the quarter. 38 yards. Back in Chicago, the refrigerator is healthy, but he's been unplugged. The fridge, nine years in the league, and uh, folk hero, remember 85 season, the climax of that great year, and the refrigerator plowing into the end zone in the Super Bowl. That ball still hasn't been found. Oh, yeah, that did bounce over there in the corner. But the fridge inactive today, a sign of the times. Day one, stat is going to bring the players into the purple and orange of the Bears. Anderson in the final play of this first quarter. Doesn't get much again. And the Fritz now just offering emotional and moral support on the sidelines. End of one at Soldier Field. The Raiders with a field goal lead. So we open the second quarter. William Refrigerator Perry, his daddy was 380, and he said his mom 280. He said, I was born to be big, and <laughs> that was always the problem with Ditka, his weight, and the Bears have another in the huddle now. Ironhead, acquired from New Orleans as a free agent. They say he's 290 in the program. Yeah, right. Ironhead, and I don't know what uh, metallurgical uh, illusion we can make to the rest. we, we got time here, Dick. Chicago with 20 total yards. And Anderson caught just as he was breaking into the clear by Aaron Wallace. Now Anderson had some open field ahead, but deny that'll bring up a third down. I'm almost afraid to say this, but I have witnesses. Yesterday at practice, the Bears have a Saturday walkthrough. That's all they do. They come in their street clothes, and they go to their walkthrough. Harbaugh goes underneath center, <laughs> says blue, 26, blue, 26. Iron hit moves, and so does his chocolate-covered donut. <laughs> <laughs> then a play later, seen licking his fingers licking to get the last fingers. remnants of that wonderful <laughs> AM treat. <laughs> A little energy. You know that's what he needed. Energy. Raiders not fooled at all by the draw on third and long. Nolan Harrison to make the tackle. He's had a big first half. Fourth down and seven. And Dick, the Bears fans are booing, but we were told by everybody on the offense they have very few running plays. The Bears don't have a lot, and the lead draw is one of their big ones. It's going to work sometimes. That time it didn't. Gardaki with the win. Brown waves the fair catch at the Raider 43, and then he's run into, and that'll be a penalty. Ooh. Number 25, Johnson. And there is apparently another little scuffle upfield. Well, as we're giving things out, I think Tim Brown ought to get an Oscar for that, uh, the end of that hit. Keyshawn Johnson, a rookie from Arizona, couldn't quite stop in time. Gordon McCarter, the man in the white hat today in Chicago. Fair catch interference. Number 25, kicking team after the fair catch. 15 yards, first down. Wow, 15-yard penalty. Uh, this play for the Bears started wrong, too. Watch the snap. Hi, Gardaki does a great job to grab a hold of it. Luckily, there's no, there's no punt rush. And then the penalty with the fair catch signal and the hit. Watch the acting. Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> and timeout. Raiders start at the 42-yard line after the 15-yard penalty for running into Tim Brown on the punt. And, boy, running into Cooper Robinson, then he spins outside and stops at the 40, but he got a couple out of nothing. Trace Armstrong, Art, Alonzo Spellman also in on the tackle. Spellman saying some duty now from Ohio State. 
does an excellent job of uh, bouncing outside. You can see all three linebackers are there. Robinson keeps his wits about him. Danell Wolford, 21 helps. Spellman finally on the tackle. But uh, it's going to be interesting to see how the Chicago Bears change their defense to accommodate these wide splits. Look at those wide eyes by Alonzo Spellman. Second and eight. Tripped up after a yard game. Good play inside by the Bears. Dante Jones submarining and uh, Albert Fontenot also in on the play. So third down seven for Hostetler, who has thrown the ball sparingly thus far in the first half. Howie Long, so famous that soon to be seen in your favorite comic books. <laughs> <laughs> and we have evidence of that, too. <laughs> Much to the surprise of Nolan Harrison, who is a comic book fanatic. <laughs> and a great catch by James Jett. No, they say he trapped it. James Jett, who has been one of the bright new faces in this league an olympian gold medal winner four by 100 and he's got 11 catches 29 yards and that ball slipping through his fingers and it didn't touch the ground that was a tough call yes it was and the official was right there underneath the reception to uh, make the call lincoln was the man in coverage that did slip through he told us last night he spent uh, several weeks working out in the offseason with jeff hostetler out in west virginia they both lived there Really helped him a great deal. Well, three nothing, and Gossett and Fox. He slides one to the right, trying to hit the coffin corner, and does. What a kick! That's like line drive down the left field line, Whoa. and it's out of bounds at the three with 12:04 left in the first half. American Airlines, something special in the air. Beautiful November Sunday here in Chicago. The Raiders have had the field advantage. Chicago has stopped and three and out the last two times. From the three-yard line, Harbaugh. Own ends on wide open, but Anderson cuts into intercept. Eddie Anderson to the five and denied the touchdown out of bounds at the two. It appeared Curtis Conway was open down the sidelines, but Anderson playing deep center field cut over to make the steal. Perfect defensive call by the Los Angeles Raiders. You're going to see Harbaugh with a little play action fake. It doesn't fool anybody. And Andy Anderson saying, wait a minute. No, it, it's not supposed to happen this way. That's a double rotation zone. You had the safe, you had the corner up Washington. And Eddie Anderson just rotated out there and the ball kind of got out of the round, looked into the wind. Never really got to the receiver, Nolan Harrison, with Mr. Harbaugh. Whoops. Hayward, his own man, <laughs> got him. <laughs> they say out of bounds, Anderson, his second interception of the year, inside the two. So the first turnover in Hostetler. That's Smith and McCallum, and it's Napoleon McCallum with a touchdown. McCallum, for those of you who joined us late from other games here on NBC, had not carried all of last year nor this year and did get a carry in the first quarter and now has a touchdown. Eddie Anderson set it up. Harbaugh made the throw, but watch the excellent blocking by Steve Smith up front. Actually, he misses everybody. I take it back. <laughs> Steve Smith didn't make contact with anybody. Yeah, and you're one of those guys that liked the instant replay. <laughs> now yes. you've just turned another one no. against him. <laughs> A great job by the offensive line. Eddie Anderson. And one play later, McCallum, Lieutenant McCallum, scores. Well, the Raiders have been searching for someone to run the football, and uh, they go to the veteran from Navy. Jager adds the extra point, and Anderson's interception leads to a quick seven, and with 11.49 left in the half, it's the Raiders by 10. Battle of the Unbeaten next Saturday, Florida State and Notre Dame. Raiders take a 10-0 lead. Eddie Anderson's interception leads to McCallum's one-yard shot into the end zone. 
And now it's Jaeger to kick it off into the wind. Terry Obi inside the 10. The Bears hungry for points. They have not scored now in 11 quarters of touchdown. It's to Green, Robert Green at the 10. Willie Ball playing on special teams misses the tackle and finally Green out of bounds at the 31, but that flag usually means uh, come on back. Robert Green, return the kickoff. Dan Lamb, 25 with a stop. Mm. So, bad field position gets worse. Interception. In order for this pattern to work, you're going to have to influence this guy somehow. Hayward goes this way, tight in here. Nothing attracts Eddie Anderson away from watching the outside receiver. We'll give you the play in just a minute. Anderson with a hard-earned six, seven yards. Winston Moss helped by Terry McDaniel. Now you watch Eddie Anderson. I'll circle him right here. He is not influenced by anything, and that frees him to go to the outside. He's watching, watching. Nobody comes out. All right, now I can go out here to the wide receiver. And it looks like Conway has everyone beaten at that point. Yep, and it's just an easy pick. That's a double rotation zone, and you couldn't ask for a situation better for a safety to make an interception. Second down and four as Anderson keys in at Harbaugh. Wobble in motion. Down. He's still hurt, too. Washington is still down. He got hit in the head. Veteran from Tulane, Lionel Washington. You see the play by way, by the way Ironhead is going is designed to go to the right. Anderson cuts back. Uh, it looks like a knee right in the side of the helmet that kind of dung Washington. Or dinged him, or danged him. Dung him. <laughs> As in D-U-N-G, yes. dung? Well, what is the past tense of ding? Neil Anderson, who replaced the immortal Walter Payton in the backfield for the Bears and had some big, big seasons for Mike Ditka, three times over 1,000 yards. 88, he was also over 1,000, but look what's happened since. Each year, decreasing yardage, and he starts today with 378 yards on the ground. Burroughs close to the 30, a gain of almost four. And you know, Dick, you're talking about Neil Anderson. When he takes the ball now, he's got both arms around it like he's a fullback. He doesn't want to cough the ball up. He used to be a guy who carried it out here and was very confident with the guys in front of you. He, he doesn't appear to have that confidence in the offensive line. Anderson, part of that great running back heritage at the University of Florida. And all of his records broken by that superb runner down at Dallas, Emmett Smith. Right, another big day again today. Offside. Oh, fumble. And the Raiders have recovered. Winston Moss falls on it, but I believe Los Angeles will be called for offside. What could have been a fatal turnover for the Bears deep in their own end, trailing 10 0. And now fans here in Chicago hoping that flag means a penalty against Los Angeles. Offside, 51 defense, five yards, no second down. Aaron Wallace lined up on the line of scrimmage. This is going to be pretty easy to see, too. Looks like he's uh, trying to blitz there, Dick. And the tight end picks him up. Didn't look like uh, Anderson ever really had that ball cleanly, did he? It never really had control of it. So second and short for Harbaugh and the Bears. A down with which to play. Hayward and Anderson lined up behind Harbaugh. Not much there again. 
Joe Kelly, 57, middle linebacker, first to hit him. It'll be close to a first down. Ideally, in a running game, wherever this guy goes, this guy goes right with him. But watch here, Anderson is cutting back inside. It's just not working perfectly. But you can never really question, well, what happened was the uh, right guard, Wojciechowski, Howie Long got outside, and that forced Anderson to cut back inside. So, you know, you can design it, and you hope it works, but you can never question a running back when he makes the cut one way and the blocker goes the other. Well, Mesher for the first down gives us a chance to uh, first down it is. Talk a bit about number 75, Howie Long. Long in his 13th season with the Raiders, the last of the Oakland Raiders, and very cerebral guy, and he's thoughtfully planned out the rest of his career and he said I'll guarantee you no one will ask me or tell me that I'm through that I can't play anymore yeah. I'll know I'm too proud of what I do I want to be in the elite I'll leave long before they have to tell me and one other thing you said about that is I thought was brilliant after this play first down from the 36 Harbaugh oh, just escapes the pressure and out of the interference although it could be an uncatchable pass that's no call. Uncatchable. Fred Banks, the receiver. Chester McLaughlin was the man harassing Harbaugh. 91. But that's what they're saying. This ball is over his head. Terry McDaniel, 36, was the closest man. Uh, Fred Banks kind of floating out there. The contact, uncatchable. To continue what you said about Howie Long, he said to us, I do not want an ex-teammate of mine, Art Shell, telling me we've had you enough. Go find your life's work. All right, they played against each other in scrimmages, and Shell taught him a few lessons. Anderson unable to get to the line of scrimmage. And Howie Long was there along with Chester McLaughlin. And one of the things going for Howie Long, the superhero, he is going to be the subject. Marvel magazines will include NFL players, and this is Howie against the dreaded Wolverine. <laughs> Hope you're ready to go down, little man. Talking holograph, no less. Hmm, recognize the uniform and the face, Howie Long. Oh, you do that very well. And but... even get the Heidi game in there. They should <laughs> yes. at least put NBC plug on I that. would hope. I've been programmed with Long's on-field strategies. On the roll, Harbaugh. Throws incomplete. Well covered upfield. Yeah. His intended receiver was Waddle. Not many options there. The good thing is you avoid the pass rush. The bad thing is you got a third of the field to work with. Much easier for the defense to cover everybody. He's still not getting a lot of time, even though he rolled out. That was 4.2 seconds before he got rid of the football. But that's from the rollout. Kardaki sails that one long, a twisting spiral to Tim Brown. Brown met rudely at the 35-yard line. 43-yard punt, 13 on the return. That's the longest return against the Bears' uh, punt unit all season long. Ron Cox made another tackle, and we have a timeout. 8-11 left in the half. The former Giant, Jeff Hostetler, last week, 424 yards passing against San Diego, breaking Cotton Davidson's all-time record. Let's see that, what he does on the National Gas Quarterback Efficiency Ratings. Moves up to 10th, Montana. The winter is still number one on the list. Harbaugh is 14. Greg Robinson hit hard by Sean Gale after a yard game. Thus far in this game, neither Hostetler nor Harbaugh has more than 20 yards passing. That's amazing. But what the Raiders are, but the Bears are doing is committing one more guy to stop the run, and here comes Gale. Inside out, stop him at the line of scrimmage. Now that's the Bears' choice here. Commit eight to stop the run, where to this point they've been committing seven. Now it's time for the Raiders to think about going deep. Well, obviously the Bears, as is with all the opponents of the Raiders, concerned about the wide receiver speed, and so figuring that uh, in advance, Archell keeps his team on the ground. Kane and Jones make the stop of Robinson, who's close to another Raider first down. But it's a matter of time. The reason that they have the speed, if they can run the ball, you get those defensive backs up a step closer to the line of scrimmage, which makes those deep patterns work and work beautifully. 
close enough for a measurement, although from this angle it appears to be short. This is a quality offensive line the Los Angeles Raiders have. Uh, there are Pro Bowl players all over the place and anchored and anchored in the middle by uh, most part. And you've also got Wisniewski, Pro Bowl, Montana, who played in a Pro Bowl uh, when they need to. And I guess their mind is right. And, uh, and when their mind is right, you know, they can do an excellent job up front. Watch this nice little trap by Wisniewski here that, that, that just pops the running back right through there. Excellent job. Wisniewski on Steve McMichael. And that's dragging people with you. 76 Wisniewski in the Pro Bowl the last three years. He said that isn't his goal this year. He'll probably make it because he's one of the best guards in football. <laughs> That's quite a story. Napoleon McCallum forgotten as a running back with the Raiders and used today as Archell searching for someone to get that big time yardage. And he's got 19 yards and four carries and the game's only touchdown. Right. You know what's amazing about a guy like McCallum and you look at a guy like Al Davis, uh, teams are struggling to find players and guys are cut. No one's brought in. McCallum hangs around year after year. A kid of great character. Al Davis, I think, like that. First down from the 49, and Robinson slips at the line of scrimmage and will there to secure the stop. The ball carrier. I'm not sure exactly sure what happened there. It, the Rocket 86 kind of uh, helping there on a block. Robinson, it, it, if we can pick up what happens here, here comes Rocket in. Uh, it looks like an intentional block on Sean Gale. That takes care of that eighth man in there to stop the run. Got to go all the way back to 1986, where McCallum was a productive runner when he gained 536 yards in his first season in the NFL. Since then, he's been very quiet. Hostetler surrounded and swallowed. McMichael and Spelman. Steve McMichael, who is only two games away from Walter Payton's record in terms of longevity as a bear. That's his fourth sack. This is Alonzo Spellman on the outside on Gerald Perry. And he starts it, and then you see McMichael already from the inside. Excellent job by 76. He gets by Max Montoya, 65. Very unusual. Montoya, one of the league's best pass protectors. Another ice bag for the Hawks. Another one. Or a bigger one. <laughs> and the give is to tie Montgomery. He follows the ball. And I believe while being tackled by George, it popped right back into his chest. Goodness. That was almost in the clear for the Bears. They run the trap again, this time the long trap, 76 leading. And it's Dante Jones, I believe, 53, who makes the contact in your right, Dick. <laughs> like there's Velcro on his, on the front of his jersey. He hangs on. One. Fourth down, and uh, OB drifts back as Gossett will punt once again. His last one perfectly aimed out of bounds. Flag goes down as uh, Gossett still down. And OB for the fair catch at the 15. But Dick, I don't think that's going to be the big penalty, so it's still going to be fourth down against the Raiders. Running into the kicker, yes. reading the lips of McCarter, so that is not the automatic first down. And Jeff Gossett comes back limping. Oh, come on, Gordon, look at I me. Get all of that for five yards. And you can see the, the Chicago Bear tries to get by him without making too much contact. Fontenot, Albert, Albert Fontenot. Fontenot. Holding his leg, trying everything, but they're going to have to repunt. Running into the kicker, number 74, kicking team, five yards, repeat, fourth down. Now Gossett says, Archell says, we don't want the penalty. Make them test start back at the 15. We'll take it inside the 20-yard line. That's good enough. The penalty, receiver's ball, first down. So it's a 41-yard punt, minus two on the return. Oh, the Bears trailing 10-0. Joe Kelly got a hand in there to trip him up. 
and uh, then the, Harrison secured. Dick, uh, excuse me, the theme has been very poor field position for the uh, Chicago Bears, and the fact that they keep running on first down. Now, if you've got problems with the pass protection, seems to me a good idea is to throw on first down, and then see if you can pick one up there. They've not started. This is their sixth possession, and the best start has been at the 20 yard line. That's a tough day at the office. Around the ankle, slashing through was Aaron Wallace. Played his ball at Texas A&M. Well, watch 45 here. He misses Aaron Wallace, and Wallace is there to make the tackle. Uh, a lot of people have poked the finger in the eye of Neil Anderson, saying he's not what he used to be. Well, he needs some blocking out front. Anderson averaging just 2.4 a carry, and he's been busy 16 times. His number's been called for 39 yards. And this is his third down and long again for the Bears. Right there was 56, Andre Bruce. Goodness, that thing almost stuck in his face mask, Dick. He would have gone as a reception. <laughs> now he says, you'll be in my next yes. comic book with those plays. The offensive line cuts everybody. And Andre Bruce, after he tried, they try to cut him, oh, nobody touches him. <laughs> right into the face box. Tim Brown with a fair catch. Now has to let it bounce. And it'll be the Raiders again with good field position at their own 46-yard line, a 34-yard Garducky punt. At the Raiders, 46. Well, next Saturday. Covered 34 yards. And it's official now. Associated Press has released its up-to-date standing. This is uh, just a few hours ago. No surprise. Florida State, Notre Dame, Miami third, Nebraska still unbeaten, barely. Ohio State drops to five. Tennessee, Auburn, Florida, West Virginia, UCLA moves into the tenth spot. And it'll be one and two, unbeaten. At the Seminoles and the Irish from uh, Notre Dame Stadium next Saturday, 1.30 Eastern time, 10.30 in the West here on NBC. Gossett to McCallum, a terrific catch, and out of bounds at the Bears' 48-yard line. A flag is down. I don't know what's happened here with McCallum. I mean, he is the big gun in the offense today. And a great Lakes Naval Station That's just it. up the road here. Maybe he's inspired by the environs. It's against the Bears. The Bears. McCallum, the son of a school teacher in Cincinnati, she's still teaching down there in your yes, hometown? Yes, uh, she, uh, Mrs. McCallum, Knapp's mother, uh, taught my son at, at the Princeton School District in uh, the north side of Cincinnati. Usually uh, doesn't see a lot of action, a naval reserve. Illegal use of hands, jammed to the face, 95 defense, five-yard penalty, automatic first down. Naval Reserve. This is dent on Gerald Perry. Kind of an unintentional hand to the face. That, that's, I mean, you're not supposed to have the hands to the face, but it, it was called Naval Reserve. Yes. Uh, you take away the catch by McCallum, and they take the penalty first down. And uh, another delay. Dave, a one step. The penalty is an automatic first down. It is not first and five. It is first and ten. Stad, who told us a terrific story as he's trying to build here about the early days in Dallas and when Jimmy Johnson, all the coaches would jog. Wanstead's an avid runner. He said Johnson would always take a little shortcut across the field and pick him up halfway around. He said one day we're talking, they said, uh, Johnson said to the coaches, what do we have that we can trade that'll bring us something? By that night, he had traded Herschel Walker. So he's a heavy jogger up here in Chicago. He needs a couple of deals like that, Dick. Yeah, we asked him about that. Steve Smith finds an open. And the former Penn State star is to the 41-yard line. Joe Kane trips him up along with uh, Jeremy Lincoln. Now, one of the things that, that you wonder about this team, watch Richard Dent here, uh, the great pass rusher. And you wonder if at some point in a guy's career, because of his reputation as a pass rusher, when things slow down, that's all you do. Now, there's a lot of running at Richard Dent because they picture him just as a pass rusher. Second and two, and Smith again. And he powers his way to a first down at the Bear 37. We approach the two-minute timeout. 
The Raiders on the move with a 10-0 lead. And there is the two-minute warning first half. We're back in Chicago where they're still hunting for their offense. Yes. They're about to go 12 quarters without a touchdown here. And when we talked to Wanstad, we said then, well, on a jog now, if you were to get with your coaches and say on your offense, who could you trade and get something? Yeah. His response was, there is nobody here uh, like Herschel Walker who's going to attract players by a trade to help our offense. And I think to this point, they only have 47 yards total offense in the first half. So the offensive problems continue. And look, there are some things that are absolute absolutes in the NFL. Hang on a minute, I'll give you my talk there. Meanwhile, the Raiders with a 10 lead on first down. Give it to the fullback, and uh, not much there. Nick. Nick Bell gets his first carry of the game. The young man from Iowa, and we have a timeout. 41-year-old Dave Wanstead, son of a steel worker, much like Mike Ditka. His dad also worked in the steel mills. They went both the uh, University of Pittsburgh. He was an offensive tackle. Uh, there are some absolutes in the NFL, and one of the first is you build your football team from the front back. Lines back. Defensive line here in Chicago is an acceptable offensive line. Offensive line is where they have to start. He said, we're not drafting offensive linemen. We're going for the free agents who already have the experience and know how to play in the NFL next year. On second down, Hostetler well protected. Now has to throw, and is it Horton inbounds? No, did not get the second foot down. That was a tough catch for Horton, well covered on the sidelines. And that was a tough throw by Hostetler. He had people right in his face. It's 93 Trace Armstrong who is right there. That one, that's a good call. Wolford was the closest man in coverage, and uh, Horton couldn't get his second foot down. Hostetler, 424 yards last week against San Diego, a Raider record, 19 yards passing in the first half today. Two for six. Horton has the only two catches, so all that speed outside, no wide receiver catches. Third and long. And there is Tim Brown with a catch and a first down at the 25. Brown's 30th catch this year. He leads Los Angeles. And the Raiders use a timeout. That was a great job by Tim Brown, too, making himself available to a quarterback in trouble. Boy, you can make friends with a quarterback when you do that. Toughest thing maybe a coach has to do, and uh, perhaps Ditka will disagree, is finally recognize when a man is too old oh. and can't play. And and it may be easier for Wanstead to make those decisions than it would be if Ditka were still here. And you know, Dave Wanstead addressed that with us, and he's doing it the right way. He's letting these guys play themselves out of the league. Some with weight, some with injury. He's not going up and say, you, get out. I'm the new guy. We want new guys. A minute 33 to go for 10 nothing Raiders. Hostetler wide open on the sidelines is the tight end Horton who steps out of bounds to stop the clock. Out of bounds at the 15, just shy of another first down. Look at that. Only 47 yards for Chicago. Team with uh, its troubles all season moving the ball. And the bulk of those 130 yards. Uh, on the ground, which is very encouraging for the Los Angeles Raiders. You know, they've uh, next to last, next to uh, Tampa Bay in terms of yardage per rush at 3.0 starting today. Second and one, Smith finds a little room off guard and uh, appears to have the first down. Richard Dent slicing underneath to get a piece of it. Uh, lead blocker, lead blocker. There was Nick Bell, so they had the uh, two fullbacks in the game at the same time. There's Nick Bell. Uh, this season, actually, his professional career, the, the littlest of injuries came seemed to keep this guy out for weeks. Coming off a bad ankle, had a hamstring earlier this year. Always wanted to be a Raider since a young boy in Las Vegas. 250 pound Bell. Inside the five, Horton again. He's a busy target. 43 seconds and a timeout. The second used by Los Angeles. 
Well, again, you when you have a double rotation zone by the Chicago Bears, where you look is inside. Hostetler's making the right choices here. He's really done an excellent job throwing the ball. That's four catches now for Ethan Horton in the first half. First and goal for the Raiders at the four-yard line with a 10-0 lead. And this will be an interesting uh, second half in that there will be a total change in environment. We start the day game in the, the sunlight and in the second half it'll be in the darkness it'll get colder and the Raiders that West Coast warm weather team would like to have a huge lead on which to uh, enjoy the second half that makes things a lot easier yes the ball does tend to get uh, very slick when it gets cold very hard when it gets cold so yes all the points you can get here in the first half helps one timeout left for the Raiders. 43 seconds for Hostetler to try to get more. 10 left in the score. Four yards from the touchdown. Smith gets half the distance. And half the Bears defense in on the tackle. And uh, the last timeout used by Los Angeles. All right. Uh, separated at birth. One step. And... Hostetler, look at that. Isn't that amazing? Hey, they're almost twins. <laughs> Hostetler on the left, in case you didn't figure it out, and Wanstead on the right. As a matter of fact, when Hostetler looked at the picture last night, he, he kind of looked twice and then three times and wondered if, uh, is that a relative? Wanstead, who uh, was drafted out of the University of Pittsburgh as a tackle and didn't play, was injured in one year and... As you heard with Mike Dick in their conversation, Coach Johnson down in Dallas has been the strongest influence. From the two-yard line, Todd Pete is in an ineligible position. Hostetler tries to scramble, and uh, now throws the ball forward. They're going to call out a foul. No, they say he was down at the one-yard line. What in the world was he doing there? Dick, I couldn't tell if his arm was going forward or, or not. That was kind of that Kenny Stabler falling down uh, the Clarence Davis throw. Yeah, that was the Pete Banasek. What happened? Is he trying to throw it as he goes down here? He slips. He's already down, well down, and in control. Of <laughs> <laughs> he did it intentionally. There is no question about that. But there are rules against that. Yes. The, uh, the Holy Roller play, as it was called, in San Diego. Right. The Raiders continue to keep fumbling it forward. Casper and Stabler in that group. And finally, in the end zone, got a touchdown when they had uh, no other way to score. That is the Raider rule. But, hey, you got to admire the kid for trying. You know? One of the timeouts taken against uh, was not charged to the Raiders but for a measurement so that's uh, this is their final timeout time for a play a pass play and then uh, if unsuccessful a field goal the measurement took place at the play before seems to me I remember the Raiders at the end of a game in a situation like this remember against the Jets and Vince Evans at quarterback, and Nick Bell goes in for a score, and a little panic in one of the biggest wins in Raider history this season. Alexander right to the left with no catches. Jet to the right, no catches. No one really in the backfield. It's to right. Incomplete. Ball is getting low, and that's where Hostetler wanted it. Eight seconds left, and they're bringing on the field goal unit. That play took only four seconds. They have chance for time for another play. It's third down. You see the bump and run coverage uh, attempted there by the Chicago Bears. Jeremy Lincoln, 39, on uh, a young man with an awful lot of speed. Well, they're not going to gamble with eight seconds on another play, and Jager with an extra point. Field goal attempt, 21 yards. Archell making sure that he got something out of that drive, but for the Chicago Bears, despite the fact they've done very little offensively in this first half, they're within two touchdowns of the lead themselves with a whole half ahead. Yeah, and Dick, remember, the only touchdown they got was after the turnover, and they take the ball over at like the one-yard line, and or two-yard line, and one play, and they run it in, so two field goals and one touchdown. Yeah, the... Uh, 
Iron Mike continues to deny he'll coach again, Bob Trumpy, but in our little uh, informal survey of his former players, there wasn't one player who said that Ditka will remain retired. And they didn't hesitate in telling us that either, did they? <laughs> they didn't wait long to, uh, he's got to be a coach somewhere. So while we're deciding your future, Mike, uh, we'll continue <laughs> with five seconds left <laughs> in this half. A chance for a kick return, although one would suspect that uh, Jager will just get one along the ground. Well, uh, Dick, did I hear Joe Gibbs basically take himself out of any opportunity to be a head coach in North Carolina uh, today? On NBC. There's over a year before that decision has to be well, made. Well, but, I mean, just today, Joe Gibbs said, tomorrow's another day. Look under the reference that says, Bill Walls, Bill Parcells, Mike Fratello. They like to go back there, don't they? Terry Obi, the deep man at the five. that special team to get him down and that is the end of the first half 13 nothing the Raiders and the Bears continue to struggle scoring points we'll be right back after this message from the NFL and a word from your local station well, the defense has dominated the first half here at Soldier Field. The Raiders uh, leading 13 to nothing, and uh, only the one-yard run, McCallum, after the interception by Anderson. Basically, that's it. The yeah. Raiders moved it a little better. What do you think about the second half? Well, uh, field position for the Bears has been miserable. They've yet to start outside their own 20-yard line. They only have 47 yards total for the first half, so that's given the Raiders good field position for the entire football game. Uh, I don't know what the Bears do to fix their problems. I mean, this, this is not... This is not an easy thing to fix, and it starts up front, and there's so little that you can do as an offensive coordinator or an offense to fix this. They need another training camp is what they need, Dick. Gardaki's kickoff very short, taken by Rocket Ismail. Ismail gets his hands on the ball for the first time today, and he takes it close to the 30-yard line. Look at the first-half official statistics, the Coors Light halftime stats and uh, there's confirmation of the Bears difficulties look at the right hand column uh, 39 yards rushing eight yards passing uh, this is encouraging for the Los Angeles Raiders to run for 101 yards and Greg Robinson was in there the first couple of uh, series and then it's out he's back in the lineup now so the running game is working for the Raiders Gets five, almost six yards. A little inside trap, and uh, Smith carrying the ball more today than any time this season. Again, Wisniewski, they, what they're trying to do is get right in this spot. Because those linebackers are offset, you've got good angles as an offensive line. So you get somebody on everybody on that defense, and that's why that trap up the middle is working. Smith in the first seven games, 46 yards. Today, 38 yards. Oh, through the hands of his tight end, Horton, who was the leading receiver in the first half with four catches. Ball thrown just behind Ethan Horton. And you see Dante Jones, 53, is the man in coverage. Now once, that's well done. Smith goes up the sideline. Horton goes to the sideline, making himself a receiver for the quarterback. But the ball is thrown uh, slightly behind him. Oh, come on, you're protecting the tight end. <laughs> that was catchable. Ditkin, I think, that the ball was thrown behind that tight end. Oh, the Raiders uh, have the right. advantage of playing on the Bears' half of the field in this game thus far. The Hawks on third down. Oh. And 74, Fontenot stripped it away for a moment, but Hostetler recovers. Albert Fontenot, rookie from Baylor, makes the play. Good coverage downfield by the Bears. You see the twist run by the Bears up front. When he steps out, watch 74. He's on the ground now from the right. Knocks the ball right out of his hands. But again, the bounces have gone the Raiders' way today. Right back to Hostetler. That's right. Remember Ty Montgomery at the end of the first half had it fumbled right back to himself. Gossett kicking with the wind. Drills it to Obi at the 21. 
Brady with a good return to the 36-yard line. That's a big play for Chicago. Yes, Listen to it. Cheer. 50-yard kick, 15 on the return by Terry Obi. Nick, Terry Obi, the last couple of weeks has been criticized a little bit by the coaching staff that he's fair caught some punts that he should have run back. It's got to be a little alarming to the Chicago management to see so many empty seats after halftime. And a 13-0 game, about half the crowd decided they'd seen enough. Harbaugh with Hayward and Anderson behind him. And it's Neil Anderson first down on the ground. And Joe Kelly gets him down. This is the best field position for the Bears today. Their seventh possession, first time past their own 20. Flag down in the secondary of the Raiders. And it's against Chicago. Tripping for an illegal chop block. You know, you're talking about the Chicago management not being happy with all the people that left. Those that are still here, when Harbaugh took the field, they booed. Well, that's the one they cheer loudest and they boo quickest. Yep. Personal foul. Illegal crackback block. Number 87. Offense. 15. Repeat first down. And Waddle seemed to get the worst of the deal. He's coming in on Hoskins, number 20. Yeah, he's down at the legs, and I think his helmet hits right on the knee of Hoskins, and Waddle goes to the sideline. Oh, Harbaugh now, was Waddle losing. And he's their primary receiver with the injuries to Wendell Davis. Anthony Morgan released. They're really thin now. Anderson on first and 20. And the Raiders giving the run, and uh, Anderson gets it out to the 30-yard line. Now, with their inability to protect the quarterback in a normal drop-back set, the Bears fans better get used to seeing that lead draw a lot, that sprint draw. I mean, long yardage situations, they don't want to have Jim Harbaugh back there throwing it two or three times. He'll get maimed. Only sacked once today after going down 16 times in the last two against Minnesota and Green Bay. Harbaugh on the roll. Quick throw incomplete to Anderson. That was well awful. covered by Winston Moss. Dick, that was almost a spectacular catch. But again, the fans being very vocal in their complaints a rollout something that worked for the Bears in the first half ball thrown behind Anderson almost makes the one-handed catch but, but the Bears have no choice here Dick I mean they got to keep uh, Jim Harbaugh standing up Boy, Covert and Van Horn and Bortz and Thayer and Hilgenberg that line that protected so well and uh, the only one left now is Bortz and perhaps in his last year third and 17 tight end, wet night, but overthrew him, and uh, Harbaugh hears the jeers. That was the most time Harbaugh had to throw, and it looks to me like they're trying to split the zone. The tight end curls up. The quarterback He's expected him to keep going. Gardakis had a busy day. Wynn cuts this one to Brown with a fair catch at the Raider 38-yard line. Two and a half minutes into the second half, the Raiders by 13. We'll take a good look at those tranquil waters of Lake Michigan. A month from now, it may not be that way. Hardly tranquil there at the eyes. 97, Chris Zorich. Now at 284 pounds, a former Notre Dame star. Hostetler on first down throwing to Tim Brown. Another domer, and he has about nine yards. You can be sure Zorich and Brown and the rest of the country will be watching closely Saturday, 1.30 Eastern. Notre Dame and Florida State, the battle for number one. Zorich makes the tackle. That's a defensive tackle. Nine yards down the field making the tackle. I mean, that's... That's why Juan Stead said, there's one of the men yep. that I wouldn't want to trade. And Dick felt the same way about him when he drafted him. 49, he said, I was born to be a Bear. Dreamed about playing for the Bears. And one of those kids that just gives you 
even more than he has. That'll be good for the first down. A short shot by Steve Smith, and Hostetler has another set of four downs. Zorich again in on the tackle. And Mike Ditka said uh, when the comment was made about Zorich, he's too short to be defensive tackle in the NFL. He said, well, that was true about Mike Singletary, too. He was too short to be a middle linebacker in the NFL. Went to the same high school as Butkus here in Chicago, locational high. And, uh, Mike once told us that he possessed the finest character he'd ever seen in a young man. A settler off play action. Has a wide open receiver right. Alexander Wright's first catch, the NFL's fastest man in the last two competitions. First down at the 32, a 19-yard play. Well, there's so much speed out here at wide receiver. You see the zone coverage, Gale deep. Uh, Lincoln up short, and uh, there's enough time for Hostetler to throw it over the corner underneath the safety. I mean, that's just beautifully executed by the Los Angeles Raiders. Acquired was right from Dallas last year for a number four draft pick. He has 12 catches this year with an average of over 21 per catch. Good coverage downfield as Hostetler hits the deck. Jeremy Lincoln was isolated on right. Uh, even though the blitz is not a big part of this Dave Wanstead defense that he brought to Chicago, with the inability of the offense to generate any uh, yardage whatsoever, they may have to resort to this on a pretty regular basis. They need turnovers. They need to disrupt any team that they play. So Chicago fans may... Uh, see a lot more of that blitz to try to get the ball back in the hands of the offense or hopefully a defensive score. Referee McCarter overlooking Vincent Smith throwing Hostetler down right after the pass. So Robinson like a pinball caroms ahead for three or four. Trace Armstrong, Zorich and others get a taste of the tackle. The Raiders uh, will be seeing the next couple of weeks. Uh, are back home against Kansas City, and rumors have it a rare sellout due at the Coliseum for next Sunday's game, or one very close to a sellout for Art Shell's battle against uh, the Chiefs. And a win today for the Raiders would move them to five and three. Kansas City five and two going into their game tomorrow night at home against Green Bay. It's underneath to Tim Brown, going to be close to a first down. Dante Jones makes the tackle. A flag is down in the backfield of the Raiders. That was very late. They called it on Gerald Perry, Mangum, number 26. An extra defensive back in the ball game was back there rushing the passer. There's 26. I, I could not see what Gerald Perry did, but... Illegal use of hands, jam to the face, number 71 offense, five, five yards, repeat third down. Well, when you have a defensive back, here's 26 and here's Perry. And, and I'm not sure we'll be able to see the whole thing, but when you have a little defensive back in there on a big offensive tackle, it's like swatting flies, you know? I mean, just, we couldn't see what the infraction was, but he must have just slapped him across the face. Get out of here, don't come back, stay back there. Buzz, buzz. Gerald Perry, former Bronco, and uh, talking with Steve Wisniewski, said, oh, am I impressed with Perry? I mean, he, we first knew that when we were scrimmaging the Cowboys every day, and for three straight days, he handled Charles Haley like he was his cousin. Now, third down and 17 now for Hostetler. Goes short and incomplete through the hands of Ty Montgomery, the kid brother of former Eagle star Wilbert Montgomery. Uh, Dick, you know, you, you mentioned Gerald Perry. We haven't called Richard Dent's name today at all. Uh, he, he's not been around Hostetler. He's been literally no factor. Gerald Perry, I mean, it, it, he was with the Rams last year and the Denver Broncos before it. Great find by the Los Angeles Raiders. Obi, that is 10-yard line. just punches one toward the sidelines and out of bounds with a flag down. 
at the line of scrimmage. Looked as if the Bears were uh, trying to go after Gossett. And Gossett uh, indicating well, he pointed toward the Bears, but it was against the Raiders' illegal man downfield. I almost uh, feel that uh, that one was going to be uh, Bears ball at about the 19-yard line that Chicago might figure that's about as good as they're going to get out of this situation. Ineligible downfield, number 29 kicking team, penalty declined, first down. 9.21 left in the third. by Booz as he returns to the huddle. He's uh, missed on seven in a row. Hasn't completed the pass since Chicago's second possession back in the opening quarter. Two for ten for 11 yards. But the problem is, he says, one, maybe I'm holding on to it too long. Two, the line not giving him enough time. Three, the receivers aren't looking quickly enough. It all hooks together. Bob Christian in for Hayward as Harbaugh Runs it out of bounds, and Moss will get a flag for a late hit. That becomes a huge play for Chicago. The scramble gets about five, and then the personal foul. Number 99 defense, late hit, out of bounds. 15 yards to the dead ball spot, first down. I, I really don't know why Winston Moss is complaining. There is no receiver for... Harbaugh to throw to, no help for him. His first step when a contact is made, he's out of bounds. I think Moss is saying, hey, if I wanted to hit him, I'd have hit him. I just put my hands on him. This is just uh, two tags above the waist. Flag ball. Well, but they try to protect those yeah. guys who have seven, six zeros behind any number in which, you know, they, they make money. Four million dollar quarterback is Harbaugh, who tested free agency, and there were rumors out in Los Angeles that he might become a Raider. Art Shell was very fond of him in the workout. It was quite conceivable that Hostetler would be the Bear quarterback, and Harbaugh would be in Los Angeles. I, I know what the response to the Chicago Bears fans are saying right now. We wish it had been. Yeah. This young guy is. Uh, Just a three-step drop, and then Washington misses the tackle completely. Waddle, who never gives up, absolutely never gives up. This is just a hitch play. He stops, he throws it, Washington slips, and then he can't hang on. Waddle's a kid from Cincinnati. Uh, th this, this guy is more like Fred Bolitnikoff than any player playing in the game today. A hands receiver. First time for the Bears on the Raider half of the field. This is Christian who played at Northwestern, and he's inside the 20. And the Bears picking up some momentum. They're down by 13, midpoint of the third quarter. This they call their rhino offense with Hayward and Christian in there together. Hayward, uh, Christian comes out as a receiver. This time McDaniel misses the tackle. And this all started with that uh, big penalty on Winston Moss. Second down, a long one and a half, closer to two. And gets into the act, and he gets about five, and a first down at the 14 of the Raiders. Nolan Harrison makes the stop. And you know, Dick, we made fun of uh, Ironhead Hayward and his chocolate donut at practice yesterday, but for his size, straight ahead, He's an amazing athlete. He really is. An excellent blocker. Has a very, I'm going to say this as kindly as I can, a very low center of gravity. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you clever diplomat, you. What a way with words. <laughs> uh, there's, there's the original. Refridge. So the Bears trying to erupt out of their hibernation of three straight games, looking for a touchdown, and it's Hayward. And he plows for five more. Half the Raider defense to bring him down at the 10-yard line. All right, again, this is the Rhino offense. 
You've got uh, Christian 44 up front, and Hayward follows him. And that's dragging about half of the Raider defense with him. Willie Broughton was the first man to get his hands on Hayward to outrace anyone on the Raider defense. The line is slowing down, straighten him and push him back after reaching the seven yard line. It'll be third and about two and a half. And Christian to the right, he is the lead blocker. Uh, it doesn't really make much contact with uh, Anthony Smith, 94. But, but that, that's got to be 325 pounds rumbling at you. I mean, it, it wouldn't tell us what his weight is, but... Hayward again. Stopped shy of the five. The flag is down. And appeared to be motion by the Bears. Yeah, they, they ran Tom Waddle in motion and he, he, he took a step up field and then the ball wasn't snapped. Let's see what it is though. Walk side. Oh my. Defense lined up in the neutral zone. Half the distance Penley. Penley is enough for a first down and goal. I'll tell you what though, they got away with one because Tom Waddle, he, he did turn up a step too early and then corrected himself. But Washington is the man they call. And watch Waddle when he takes that step forward. They call Washington top of the screen. You see Waddle? Right. There's one for the Bears. The Bears have not scored a touchdown in 12 quarters plus this one. First and goal from the three. Anderson back in. He gets the ball. down in 42 possessions. Goodness. Goodness. Kevin Butler to try the extra point. It's good and the Bears are within six. Watch the lead block here by Hayward. He gets two of them, Dick. The play comes right here. They take Christian out. Ironhead leads. There's one, there's two, and Anderson cuts right inside for the easy score. And 81-yard drives. The Bears have awakened this partisan crowd. It's 13 to 7 Raiders. Gardaki kicks it off to right, and Ismail hits the rocket. Across the 35 to the 37, a 30-yard return. One of the better uh, returns against the Bears all season long. This is the touchdown, Dick, from behind the defense. This is super slow-mo. Look at the job they did caving down the onside. The kick out by 73 and also Ironhead. And Neil Anderson makes it... Uh, Almost untouched to the end zone. That, that's, a, that's a good job by the strong side. And Wojciechowski, a nice pull there out in front of Neil Anderson. It was an 81-yard drive for the Bears in seven plays. And Anderson has his second touchdown of the season. And uh, that offensive line. And Hayward sitting right in there with him. He belongs. <laughs> Getting a uh, spur down for the next opportunity as Robinson crosses the 40. Pickup of... Uh, about four on first down with Michael and Zorich trailing and making the tackle. Well, now the defense has got to be thinking here, turn the ball over, get the ball back for our offense. They've got some momentum, and it's been so long since they've had anything on offense. Get it back to us. But this defense of the Bears is good, sixth in the league, and uh, will give the Bears a chance in every game if the offense can produce anything. Couple of touchdowns. Steps away from Ben. And that'll be short of a first down to Robinson at the 45, tackled by Dante Jones. Jones replacing Mike Singletary in the middle 
of the Bear defense. And, you know, you mentioned an excellent point about the defense is good enough. If the offense can just keep giving the defense a rest every once in a while. I mean, the offense can't go three downs and out. By the end of the game, the defense gets so worn out it can't function. Under four minutes left in the third quarter here at Soldier Field. Third down and two. Jones looks offside there. Big hole for Smith. And he's to the 42-yard line of Chicago before Jeremy Lincoln, the cornerback, can slash in for the stop. Well, we came into this game wondering if the Raiders are going to be able to run the football. Another trap by Wisniewski, 76. They don't normally give the ball to the fullback much here. This is a tailback-oriented offense of the Raiders. And the Raiders have taken apart the middle of that Chicago Bear defense. Steve Smith has gained more yards today than he did total the first seven games of this season. 54 yards for Smith. What appears another first down near the 30 of Chicago. Sean Gale, the safety, bumps him out. Oh, this is the old 28 grace. There's nothing special about this. It should be coming right at you. See the guard pulling Max Montoya, 65, 35. Smith with the lead. They capture the corner. Robertson turns it up. Gale and Wolford finally get him out. This is the way the Raiders used to run the football, Dick. More to the left side with that. Yes, Shaw. And Shell. Shell. First down, Robinson. To the left side. Flags down and no game. Good play made on the corner by linebacker Vincent Smith, the ex-cowboy. And he was held. I don't know who held him, but he was held. And the Raiders far and away the leaders in the NFL in that department. Most penalties, most yards. Holding number 71 offense, 10 yards, repeat first time. Well, Gerald Perry with two big penalties. 48 yards total against the Raiders. That's a quiet day. Well, let's see if he gets his hand on. Uh, he pulls Dent right straight to the ground. Yeah, we'll give him two points. He got bent to his back. The Raiders are averaging almost 88 yards and penalties per game. Prior to today, more yards penalties than rushing the ball. Zorich held his ground. He gets crowded in there playing defensive tackle. He's got Wisniewski in front of him. It's another trap. This time Montoya, 65. The right guard comes to pull the trap. And Zorich hammers him right to the ground. Max Montoya is great at a lot of things. At this age and the years he's been in the NFL, trapping is not one of them. Zorich took advantage of him there, just collapsed the hole. Montoya in his 202nd NFL game. Cincinnati and the Raiders. Jeremy Lincoln, and oh, is he a Jet. 82 of the Raiders. They seem to be running in tandem, and then all of a sudden, like shot, forward was Jet, and Lincoln uh, on the turnaround was didn't seem to do anything blatant, but uh, Jet, as he turned to try to get the ball, perhaps uh, denied. Was it catchable? Was it catchable? There is, there is no foul. The pass was uncatchable. Jeff Asperger in the background. Well, that uh, evens it out. There was a play in the first half. The Bear fans thought uh, should have been a penalty, but uncatchable was the call. And you see the contact, and as Jeff turns around, yeah, I don't think he could have gotten to the ball because he looked inside. You can see where the pattern is designed to go. That's making a rookie mistake. He's looking inside. Ball should be thrown inside. And when it's thrown outside, he can't get to it. Even Carl Lewis wouldn't have gotten it. <laughs> Placed him in the 4 by 100 meter relay. You're right. Jet was, the, Jet was the anchor in the prelims, and then Carl took the baton for the big show and the gold medal. Dumps it off to Montgomery and flags down again. Montgomery tackled at the 35. 
Maurice Douglas and Zorich in on the tackle. Along with them. <laughs> we asked Jed about that gold medal. So he still got the gold medal by the four for the four by 100 meter relay. It's in a bank in his hometown of West Virginia. So. This time, oh, that's a big one against the Bears because that carries a first down. Holding, cornerback, defense, five yards, automatic first down. Jeremy Lincoln has replaced Anthony Blaylock. Blaylock out with an injured thigh and the second-year man from Tennessee. And uh, Juan said, said, you know, he's got great speed, but he doesn't have the experience, was worried about Lincoln being picked upon. Well, I'm just looking here at an all-22 look. They called it on the corner. There's no contact corner on receiver at all. Zero. None. You could you could uh, see the surprise on Jeremy Lincoln's face. He didn't touch anybody. Raiders leading 13 to 7. There's a minute and a half remaining in the third quarter. Fumbles and for the third time today, a Raider fumble bounces right back to a Los Angeles player. Joe Kane made the tackle and forced the ball free. Smith normally very sure-handed. Kane is going to come from the left-hand side. It's a blitz. There he appears. Just helmet hit the ball right out. Let's see if we can find the interference that gave the Raiders a first down. This is Lincoln. They, they called it on the cornerback. You see, there's absolutely no contact there whatsoever. That's why he was perplexed as to why holding on the cornerback. What are you talking about? Settler down the middle. Horton, the tight end, a twisting catch for a first down inside the 25. Kane downs him as we see the final seconds chewing up the third quarter. Dick, I'm telling you, they don't hold up tight ends in the NFL anymore. And if the quarterback has time, you can find guys like Ethan Horton open every Sunday throughout the NFL. I don't know when they stop holding them up. But, man, they're there every week for you. Nice numbers for Horton today. Five for 55. Stetler on the scramble. And the dive. Ooh, and then crunched from behind by McMichael at the 15. A gain of about seven in the final play of the third quarter. The Bears back in it. We'll be back after these words from your local station. With Bob Trumpy, Dick Enberg, welcome back. Second down and two as we open the fourth quarter in Chicago. The throw incomplete. He had uh, his man open, James Jett. And Jett is going to be terrorizing that secondary around the league. In fact, Al Davis said, and listen to this, Al Davis said that he thinks that Jett is going to be better than Cliff Branch. That's saying something. He also, we were told that Cliff Branch only had three receptions his rookie season. That from a, a Raider official. So we're going to assume that is correct. But, uh, you know, James Jett is going to catch a lot more than three in his initial season. 11 coming in, averaging almost 30 yards per catch. Third down and two, underneath to Jet. That's a uh, loose change, just pennies, but enough for a first down at the 10. So they'll have to go the full 10 on first and goal, it would appear. And you know, the thing about James Jet, this guy is not one of those track guys. It just goes goal line to goal line. He's willing to go across the middle. This is a delay. There are fat guys in there that are mean. And he's only 165 pounds. Maybe. He's not afraid to go in there at all. Ball right on the 10, so first and goal. Just underway fourth quarter. Raiders 13, Bears 7. McCallum, Napoleon gets about seven on first down. He scored the only touchdown for the Raiders, a one-yard plunge after Eddie Anderson's interception in the first half. Dick, they're doing an awful good against this uh, Chicago Bear defense. This is straight ahead blocking. Man on man, nothing to it. Doesn't even need an assist. Not much of an assist from Steve Smith, the fullback. So McCallum, who had not carried the ball in a couple of seasons, gets a chance today and has 26 yards and a touchdown on five tries. Second and goal. Little mix up, but McCallum has not been back there that often, and the fly goes down, and perhaps a false start against the Raiders. Wolf 
start before the snap. 65 offense, five yards, still second down. Montoya. Well, there's lots of movement there. You see Max kind of coming out of his stance there. He's got a block on Torres. Looked like he reacted to Hostetler yelling yes. at McCallum to get back and took that as a snap That's count. right. So that makes it tough on the Raiders inside the nine on second and goal. Check the motion man. Incomplete. Tight end hook and well covered by Vincent Smith. Smith acquired from the Cowboys in the trade that sent uh, Roper and Paul and Blackwell down to Dallas. Smith and Barry Minter, linebacker, coming to Chicago. Should be coming right at you. You see 88. Smith does an excellent job here. Contact comes at just the right time. And it's tipped away, incomplete. They respot the ball, and the Raiders gained a half yard on the incomplete pass. It's now on the eight yard line. <laughs> Denied the touchdown. Horton at the two. Hostetler with another row. Oh, give him six on that. 108 yards throwing. 10 for 21. And on comes the field goal unit. So to the credit of the Bears, they deny the touchdown. And Shaker with what amounts to his second extra point field goal today. He kicked one from 21 yards at the end of the first half. He is uh, 15 for 17 on the season. And this will be another, well, this will be a 20-yarder. When coaches look at 20, 21, 22-yard field goals, those uh, remind them a long drives for three instead of seven. Drives him crazy. 16 to seven, 20 yards officially on the field goal. 12 and a half minutes to go. Twelve twenty-six to go in the fourth. And now the Bears need more than a touchdown. Jeff Jager. And it's Obi who gives way. Bears is out of bounds at the 35 yard line. Uh, maybe that's the man that can awaken the Bears offense. Tim Worley. Timeout. Well, they didn't take the timeout on the field, and Harbaugh on the run hits OB. His first catch, 15 yards, and a first down at midfield. Straight drop back, and this is without question the most time that Harbaugh has had, and he's still flushed out of the pocket. Continues to look downfield. they got to admire this Harbaugh kid. A lot of quarterbacks in that situation either fall on the ground or take off. He's still trying to make the completions. 16 to 7, it's Anderson. And now the... Uh passing game, opening up the running game, and of course that whole manner of complementing the two forms of attack. You can't really expect to uh, continue to be a top winner unless you have both, and a classic example of two teams went to the Super Bowl last year and continue to play well this year, yep. the Cowboys and the Bills. They run it, they pass it. Yep. It's the balance you need in your offense. Inside the 40. What's cooking in New York, Jim Lampley? Well, with the Dolphins trailing the Jets 20 to 3, Scott Mitchell wants to bring them out of the frying pan by using Irving Fryer, who's able to wait lonely for the ball and then take it in from 65 yards out, slicing the Jets' margin in half. It's still 2010 New York. Back to Dick and Bob. All right, our master chef in uh, New York is cooking, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. He's a fryer. Getting about five yards a try here. Five, five, and five. And inside the Raider 35 before Nolan Harrison can twist him down. And Washington can secure Neil Anderson, who's had a good day. 62 yards. Good day and now good night. 
Now, see, Dick, the last time the Bears had the ball, they established some momentum, found some things they could do. Now, this time they come out on the field showing some signs of life offensively. Ten minutes exactly to go. Waddles okay. He's back into the right. in motion and he's going to pick off the man where Christian runs the pattern very well designed Harbaugh puts it right on the money there's another big pullback that Bob Christian he's only 510 but carries 225 rush for some 2600 yards with the Wildcats Gets his chance and picks up maybe a yard. Aaron Wallace and others for the tackle. Oh, Nolan Harrison was right in the uh, backfield there just as Ironhead got the ball. He's got a, a bad elbow. He kind of hyperextended it a couple of weeks ago. And watch Harrison show up here 74. Oh, that thing just bounced off his face mask. That, that'll make that elbow sting. Harrison played at Indiana. He's 280, given about 25 pounds away on that matchup with Ray. <laughs> Anderson up the middle, grabbed by the ankles at the 20. And how many times today? Four or five times. Anderson just about at that point where he's going to break for a good gain, gets caught right around yes. the ankles. McLaughlin got him that time. And I, I suppose there are longtime Bear fans who say, well, that's how much he's slowed down. Five years ago, he used to get to that hole a little quicker. I mean, if you're a Neil Anderson fan, you say, wait a minute, you know, when the hole closes, no running back in the world can make a lot of yards. The only exception to that was Walter Payton. receiver set spread out the defense well called now you can tell it's a design play because watch the offensive lineman set go downfield you know immediately he's got three people out there to escort him picks up the first down at the 11 yard line they can get a first down without the touchdown 16 to 7 Anderson to the 8 yard line well Harbaugh we asked him about Juan Stett and he said he's a little different that I grew up with my father who was a tough critical coach then I went to Michigan Bo Schembechler got a little more of the same then I came here and Ditka was waiting so that doesn't change and Wanstead uh, is a more of half full the glass yeah. is half full it's uh, and he's trying to be very soothing and easy on this team in his first year Wanstead think positively and Harbaugh's been a project because he's been beat by these fans as he has again today. Anderson again, close to breaking free and caught by the shirt tail inside the five. So close. Gary McDaniel with a little shot to the head there, Neil Anderson. And Troy Ozzie, number 70, was a little incensed. But with these two teams, you expect that. I mean, that's just part of the everyday playing football. Hayward, excellent block on 51 Wallace. Now watch at the end of this play. Terry McDaniel, hands to the face. Ozine pulls him away. The ball just inside the four. Remember the Bears can get a first down at about the half yard line. The toss to Anderson. What a defensive play by 91 Chester McLaughlin. He's 315 pounds, fans. 315, and he sprints to the outside and collars Anderson. He, he's also a defensive tackle. He had the half of the field to run out there. That was a tremendous play by McLaughlin. No wonder the Raiders are so high on this second-year man from Clemson. He has basically been adopted by Howie Long. 
that is a very good adoptive parent if you're Chester McLaughlin. So with that play at the four and three yards for a first down, Butler will try the short field goal. And misses it to the left. Oh, no. Well, the cycle is sour. One of the most consistent things for the Chicago Bears through all this has been Kevin Butler. Butler Goodness. had made 24 in a row inside the 40, and Harbaugh reacts as well as anyone in Chicago might to a 21-yard miss. The Raiders after the short miss by Butler take over the 20, and Napoleon McCallum gets seven yards. Go back to Butler, however. That was his 254th field goal attempt as a Bear. He's their all-time scorer. The shortest he's ever missed, Goodness. 20 yards. So that just is a total upset and upsetting to the Bears and their fans who had a chance to pull within a touchdown of victory. And time now running out as the Raiders will try to chew it up on the ground. Second down and three, and Hostetler using his full complement of time between plays. Getting a lot out of a little near another first down. Let's go to New York and Jim Lampley. And it appears there will be no escape for the Dolphins today. Answering the touchdown from Mitchell to Fryer, Boomer Esaias, and down the middle to Chris Burkett. 12 yards for the touchdown pass that extends the Jets' lead back to 17 at 27-10. They've got the Dolphins' number, Dick. Don Shula reminded of his uh, most difficult defeat to the Jets way back in Super Bowl three, and now the Jets making that perhaps 2-0 and oh this year. And if the Jets win, they go to 4-4 four and four and uh, back in the playoff fight in the East. Buffalo 7-1 would take over sole possession of the lead. McCallum on third and inches, and I, yeah, we'll see how they mark it. Looks as if the line judge has his toe right on the stripe, which would be a first down. So, based on today's play, Buffalo winning in overtime. Miami should lose. It would fall a game behind the Bills, and the Jets would move up to 4-4. Four and four. Cleveland losing. Pittsburgh wins, so they're tied 5-3 in the Central. Kansas City led. Starting on the 20-yard line. The ball is touching the 30-yard line. That is a first down. So rather than measuring the logic uh, that they've lined the field properly, that's 10 <laughs> yards and a first down. Well, oh, wait a minute, In the old days of yes, Wrigley Field, was was that. Bear, that may not have been the case. Yes, that is absolutely true. <laughs> I say that with great respect and uh, and uh, endearment of Papa Bear. Yeah, there, Papa Bear was even uh, one to sell tickets on the bench of the, of the opposing teams. Yeah, in there. never be one even close. <laughs> Wrigley Field. He was all alone, number one. That's it. So the first down to Al McCallum. And a flag goes down, and that's what the Bears need to have, something that uh, will push the Raiders back and perhaps uh, make them throw the ball, stop the clock with an incomplete. Dante Jones makes the tackle. It is against Los Angeles. Uh, you know what else they need to do is make sure that the defense stops the clock with timeouts. You've got to save time for your offense. Even though you're down by nine points, you've got to save time for your offense. That's the defense's responsibility. Just to, to jump a little bit off to uh, the Hold it. Number 71 offense, 10 yards. Repeat first time. Perry has the hat trick. The, with Shula about to break the Hallis mark, the beautiful thing to me about records in all sports is and sometimes we lose sight of the fact that it allows us to be reminded of the man or woman who held the record before. And part of the Shula tribute now is for us all to think about what a great one George Hallis was as well. And McCallum unable to catch the short pass, and that's what the Bears want. Stop the clock. 3.16 to go. Mike Shula, assistant now here with the Chicago Bears. Brother, older brother David, the head man at Cincinnati, and Mike uh, Destin, the one would think to be a head coach himself. Uh, college or pros, not too far ahead. The best man at Don Shula's recent wedding. But but at his age, 
and in the coaching profession, can he even fathom 324 wins at any level, Dick, not just the NFL? Probably the early start down at 33. Smith up the middle, and let's see. The Bears will spend a timeout at the 310 mark. So 310 to go. The Raiders leading 16 to 7. Back at Soldier Field, Chicago won a divorce and the season tickets. <laughs> uh, oh, that's that, awful. Okay. Well, so is the voice, so I guess it all fits. Huh? That lower than my is barreling his way forward to the 36-yard line. That'll bring up fourth down, a 14-yard run. Bears spend another time up. Just under three minutes to go. The Raiders in the lead. Fourth down. Gossett to punt. He has not been blocked this year. They go after him, but uh, not close. Sends a high short kick. Third catch by Obi at his 34-yard line. And Dan Land walking all over him. The fans want a penalty. One was called against Chicago in the first half in those circumstances. So change of possession. Timeout 252 remaining in the fourth. This Heisman Trophy moment is brought to you by Wendy's International. At Florida, quarterback Steve Spurrier proved a game saver. Eight times in his college career, Spurrier rescued Florida from defeat in the fourth quarter. The multi-talented Spurrier won games with his kicking as well as his passing. The son of a preacher, Spurrier's prayers were answered in 1966 with his Heisman Trophy moment. What are you doing here, buddy? You invited me to lunch. I did? Honey! Because I'm here for lunch. He is? Oh, Dad. Because today we got a little problem here. No lunch, huh? Well, we can go to Wendy's. Yeah! Luckily, Wendy's has a 99-cent super value menu with delicious junior bacon cheeseburgers, chili, baked potatoes, and biggie fries. And for just $1.99, get our hamburger kids meal. We ought to have lunch here all the time. We do. <laughs> we do. <laughs> Wendy's, you don't pay more, you just get more. The Miller Genuine Draft for us to want a stock car. Hear it. Feel it. Catch it if you can. Welcome back. Final 252 in the fourth period. The Raiders leading 16 to 7. Los Angeles. Trying to move up to a 5-3 record. Denver is 5-3 with their win in Cleveland. And Kansas City needs a win tomorrow night to stay atop the West of the American Conference. Harbaugh, at his own 34, has one timeout plus the two-minute warning. Needs a couple of possessions and a quick strike. Anderson with him in the backfield. Waddle on the sidelines, and James Trapp bumps him out of bounds right at the sticks. And Dick, uh, Anthony Smith almost got hardball there. Now, this is where the Chicago Bears need protection for the quarterback. He's going to have the, the deep drops here, so this is where... It's going to be tough for a Harbaugh to stand there and look down the field. Watch 94, Anthony Smith. He has 11 sacks, and that's playing primarily only in passing situations, as he is now. He's after him, and this pinched off. And Harbaugh has to throw it away as uh, Torn Dorn comes up from the secondary, one of the part of the dime package to put the pressure on. Jets continue to lead Miami. There's Torn Dorn. Uh, actually, this is a pretty good job of pass protection by the Bears. Uh, quarterbacks get clocks in their head, and they know how long they can stand there before they got to move, and that's exactly what Torn Dorn was there to do. 2.39 to go, third down and a short yard. 
It'll get the first down. No, they lose a yard on the play as number 52, Mike Jones, shoots in from a linebacker position to help out Chester McLaughlin. Goodness. So now they have to get at least a couple of yards, a fourth down and two to maintain possession. 221. Our ball underneath. And that might be just enough as Jones drills the receiver. It was Anderson. Well, that is awful close, Dick. The uh, call time to measure, and that'll stop the clock for Chicago at 2:12. And the far side change, or the official change, is half. They've got it based on that. This would be a shame if they don't have it. Oh, they do big time. So Harbaugh will hurry his team up to the line of scrimmage, try to get into play maybe two before the two-minute warning. He throws incomplete intended for the tight end Ryan Wetnight, the rookie from Stanford. But he gets another play before the two-minute warning. Well, it's been a game uh, that has not featured any brilliant big plays. I guess the biggest of all in this outcome would be the Raiders' uh, defensive uh, steal as we sort things out in that regard for the play of the game. Eddie Anderson in the first half. Five yards to reach 100 for the day and doesn't get it there to water. And at 157, the two minute timeout, the Bears trailing by nine. Back at Soldier Field with 157 to go if the Raiders win. This would be a look at the AFC West going into tomorrow. Kansas City hosting Green Bay tomorrow night. Uh, we well could have a three-way tie for in the West. And next Sunday, we will be at the Coliseum in Los Angeles as the Chiefs and Raiders, one of the top fights in the league, uh, rivalries. <laughs> That's the word that came out because there's been plenty of them. And uh, the Raiders have already lost at Kansas City, and that'll be one of our feature games next Sunday. There's our lineup on NBC. But uh, our ball... Looking for something special here. A big play and maybe an onside kick, and they'll get a penalty from Howie Long, unless he was drawn offside. Howie is quick, always has been, getting off the ball any defensive lineman in football. Encroachment, 75, defense before the snap, five yards, still third down. Uh, last night he told us he's, he's in his zone, he's just looking for movement, and any movement, unfortunately. Yeah, just a little bob of the head that yeah. Harbaugh got in that time, and he must have tremendous peripheral vision because he just said, I, I just react, I see so much around me. Right into a crunching tackle by Derek Hoskins. Oh, and Waddle not getting up too quickly. I remember he already got, already been out once. We got a knee to the head. That was one of the dung the earlier. This is the ding. The other was the dung. Huh? <laughs> this is a double dung right here. Yeah, because of an injury, they're charged to timeout. So that'll be the last timeout for the Bears. Uh, you know, uh, Dick, you mentioned it next week. The best fight between Kansas City and L.A. Are huddles important in that game next week? I mean, just to break up fights, they are really important next week. So Waddle, uh, 185 pounds, a tough little guy at Boston College. Time now for the Hager wrinkle-free cotton super play of the game. And this was the biggest play. Eddie Anderson, it looked as if Curtis Conway, the rookie, was free down the sidelines. But Anderson reading it. Drifts over from his safety position, returns it all the way to the one-yard line, and one play later, Napoleon McCallum would score the Raiders' only touchdown. So no timeouts left for Harbaugh. 1.46 to go. Christian in the backfield now with Anderson. Harbaugh to Christian. Tackled by J. 
Christian. What a job by Christian to drag him out of bounds and stop the clock. That was a heck of an effort by this uh, 11th round pick by Atlanta a couple of years ago. Harbaugh had only eight yards passing in the first half. Things improved somewhat here in the second. They've had one big drive, but that's been basically it. Howie Long passing Harbaugh, who has to throw it away, and the fly goes down. I think the penalty probably was on Howie again. Uh, they just have a three-man rush, so Howie's right there staring at the football. Offside, 75 Chicago. Five yards, repeat, second down. That's offside Los Angeles. Raiders now uh, moving right up to their average, 73 yards in penalties today. Their average 87.7, way out in the lead in the NFL. You're not supposed to win when you're penalized that much either. You know that? The Raiders have always been penalized heavily, and they still win. Uh, in the game as a fourth wide receiver and Harbaugh throws down the middle two banks and a first down at the 13 yard line Banks uh, released by the Miami Dolphins a week ago now the automatic play everybody knows what it is he's just going to throw the ball down 118 to go so a quick touchdown here onside kick Maybe Kevin Butler will get a chance to make amends. Well, is it in this town? You can talk like that. I listen to Harry Carey going way back, and I can remember Harry when teams would be down 8-0 and two outs in the ninth. There's a couple of errors, a couple of fun hits, three or four walks, a home run, and we're right back in, right back in. Just Harbaugh's fifth touchdown thrown this season, and if nothing else, the Chicago Bear football team, with all of its problems, again today, shows great character, perseverance. They're not about to give up. And now how big was Butler's 20-yard miss when they had the ball on the four-yard line? It's now 16-14. It could be a Bears lead 17-16. And now time for the onside kick. This is the fade pattern. Trap is the man in coverage, a young man, and Obi does a great job of getting around him. Now Trap is another one of those speedsters of the Los Angeles Raiders, beautifully thrown by Harbaugh. He puts enough arc in the ball that Obi can run under it. Now the Raiders uh, have had nightmarish finishes to their games this year. Remember the Cleveland Browns with yes. no timeouts and uh, Metcalf running one in to beat them on the final play. They barely beat the Jets on the final play of the game. Last week, late driving for what appeared to be a clinching touchdown. Donald Frank of uh, the Chargers took an interception back 102 yards for a score as the Chargers beat them. And now, seemingly a comfortable advantage at 16 to seven. Their lead is down to two. They've seen a short field goal missed by Butler, the shortest he's ever missed. And now with 113 to go, the trepidation in the face of uh, Art Shell should the Bears recover this onside kick. Yeah, and Dick, when you look at the total numbers for the two teams, time of possession is going to be so much in favor of the Raiders. Surprising it's uh, just a two-point lead and could be a one-point deficit if Butler makes that kick. You're right. So Gardaki has uh, it teed up, and the Raiders overload to this side. Oh, and it's loose, and the Bears have it at the 49-yard line. Oh, my! Poorly done by the Raiders. They just seem to be waiting for someone else to go after him. But the guys go up front and block. The first one is Lionel Washington, 48, who goes after it, and then Tim Brown can't get to it. 
and I did not pick up the bear who made the recovery. I tell you what, there were a couple of bears coaches and players on the sidelines that had to restrain themselves. They wanted to <laughs> dive in and cover it themselves. But here is a chance for a miracle finish, and Kevin Butler might yet have a chance to win it for Chicago. This year, kicked his career-long 55, and he'll have the wind at his back if he gets a chance. Remember, no timeouts left for Chicago. They need to get it down to around the 30 for a legitimate try. 21 yards. whatsoever and get Butler out there to redeem himself. 25 yard run and then the penalty takes it to the 12 yard line. It would appear to be a sinks field goal but it was shorter than that for Butler when he missed when the line of scrimmage was the four. Anderson, and he's drilled by Joe Kelly. They knew that ball was coming straight down the middle as they set it up for it's a matter of whether he likes it in the middle or the left or the right hash mark. And the clock will run, and the Raiders uh, aren't going to stop it. Now, Butler is in uh, one steps all the time, standing right next to him, telling him which way the wind is. So if you just asked the question, Butler just told one step where he wanted it, left or right. Uh, he's a meteorologist. He knows the winds and the drifts and the grass and the temperature and everything, how it affects his kicking. And once that said, he keeps me apprised. The kneel down for Harbaugh. Well, they, wanted to, they wanted to throw the ball down to stop the clock. Oh, now the clock is running. And this, this could be disastrous for the Bears. They may not get a chance to kick the field goal. The Raiders just kick the ball away. And that will allow the official to stop the clock. That, and if the Bears are smart, they've got to get somebody in there. Now, they do have time to take a snap and down, a, down the ball with five seconds. Oh, my. You better hurry. Good. One second to go. Goodness. One second to go, and they were fortunate to have the down, and here comes Butler. Oh, my goodness. And the incredible finishes of the Raiders this season are a book in themselves. One second, the final play it. of the Come game, on. and the Raiders will try to cool off Butler, make him think about his miss the last time, and you can be sure some of those big guys up front are going to be talking as loud as they can to remind Butler that he was wide left on a very short chance. Oh. Unbelievable. Oh. I remember at the end of the first half, the Chicago Bears had 47 total yards. And the Raiders had some good drives, but always settling for field goals. Their only touchdown came on a one-yard drive after the interception by Anderson. The onside kick successful. Regardless what happens here, they'll be talking about all week here in the Windy City. Butler winded his back. It's a 30-yard attempt for victory. And to erase the ugliness of an earlier miss. a high snap, Dick. And the Raiders are going to hurry and get on the bus before someone changes the mind of this game. Butler from 20 and from 30, two misses from a man who had hit 24 in a row inside the 40-yard line. Oh, the pain and the body of that man, Kevin Butler. But I'm not sure you can blame it on Kevin Butler. That was a high snap. Gardaki, the punter, did a great job to get it down. 
It just threw off the timing of the kicker ever so slightly. Ooh. Art Shell and the Raiders. You see how high the, the, the snap was? It was over Gardaki's head. He actually does a good job of getting the ball down on the ground. Threw off the timing, perhaps, of Butler. Actually, the spot looks pretty good, but if the timing is off and the kicker sees the holder go up at it, it just... And no. So Dave Wanstead, his team valiantly coming back, looked good from that angle, couldn't see the width. And now have to pretend that, uh, well, we got another week. We got to be positive. We did some good things and we came back and Art Shell, wide-eyed, can't believe that he escaped the noose today. His team flirting with defeat down to the final seconds, 16-14.